Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is sending adaptive cards to Microsoft Teams from Azure Logic Apps. Let's go. So let's talk a little bit about why this episode is important. So adaptive cards are a great way to communicate with end users. We see them being used all over the place. It could be you know, directly in Teams itself, could be Bot Framework, Bot Framework Composer, and we also have the Power Automate action itself. So the question is, can I also do the same sort of functionality with Azure Logic Apps? And the answer is yes, you can. And uh, we can do so using the same connector that Power Automate is using itself. And so what this allows us to do is introduce review and resubmit scenarios through the use of Azure Service Bus Messaging and Azure Logic Apps. And so what we can actually do then is build processes that allow us to you know, in discover when we run into an error go ahead and serve up that information to a human, you know, in a much like a human in the loop type scenario, and then allow a, you know, support team or an integration center of excellence team to go ahead and review the error, you know, maybe make any modifications to the data, um, and then be able to go ahead and resubmit. And we can go ahead and do that from a common ex user experience, and that happens to be Microsoft Teams. So let's go ahead and let's dive deeper into this subject. Okay, so let's go through a sample scenario here. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're going to have a service bus trigger and we're naturally going to pick up messages off of a queue. We're then gonna go, go ahead and perform some actions. Here I'm just doing some very simple math just to illustrate the point. Obviously your scenario will vary, but inside of a try scope, what's gonna happen is we're gonna throw an error then what we're going to be able to do is catch that error through a scope, another scope. And then what we're going to go ahead and do is send our adaptive card over to Microsoft Teams, where we'll have an operations person take a look at the message payload and then be able to go ahead and resubmit or cancel the run if they wish. Now, if they do choose to go ahead and resubmit, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to construct a new message that'll be fixed based upon the inputs captured in the adaptive card. And then we'll put that message back onto the same queue. And then we'll have another instance of our Logic App mm -hmm. go ahead and consume that specific uh, message itself. Now the adaptive card itself, if you've never gone ahead and built one, you can go ahead and uh, find the online editor at adaptivecards.io slash designer. I'll include a link to, uh, to both of this and the actual JSON file that I constructed. So if you want to just go ahead and download it, you'll go, be able to go ahead and download the payload, which was represented right here. I'll put both of those links in the description of the video if you're looking for it. But what you can expect is really just a drag and drop experience. And then you can go ahead and you know update the IDs and the values of the different controls that you go ahead and drop onto your form. And then what we're gonna have is a couple action buttons. And inside of our Logic App, we'll detect what is the, uh, essentially the ID of the button that was clicked. And that will allow us to determine whether or not we wanna resubmit that specific instance, or if we want to go ahead and cancel that run. So let's go ahead, let's jump into a demo and see this uh, in action. Before we run the demo, let's take a closer look at the Logic App itself. So I am in Logic App Standard, and uh, I am using the when a message is received in a queue autocomplete trigger. And uh, this is gonna come from the Azure set of connectors, not the uh, built-in ones. I've got my polling interval here essentially every 30 seconds, obviously mileage may vary there. Now what I'm going to do is create a variable called result which is going to store a float value type and then here I'm going to go ahead and have my try scope. Now what I want to do is I want to be able to go ahead and retrieve the content and then be able to go ahead and cast it uh, into a specific message payload itself. So what I've got here, this is my sample message. I have two operands. I've got 10 and a zero. So what I just did is copied this and then went ahead and used the use sample payload to generate schema feature, pasted this value in. Now I've got a typed schema from that perspective. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and use the content that's part of my trigger body. Uh, so what's going to happen is now I'll have like a, a typed payload. Um, these are going to be integers that are sent in. And now what I'm going to try to do is divide the first operand by the second operand. So, you know, in this case, 10 divided by 0, which naturally is going to result in an error. But that's what I'm going to try to do is store the result of this equation into that results variable itself. Now, we will expect this to fail on the first run. And for that reason, that's why I've got another scope here. And if I click on the run after, we're going to see that this scope will only run when it's timed out, skipped, or it's failed. And so that's what we can expect uh, this when this to run. Now what I've got is post an adaptive card and wait for a response. So this is the content that I had generated inside of the adaptive card designer. Now I did provide the URL for all of this text here in the description of the video. And what I do have here is I've got a couple placeholders, right, where I can inject the values that were retrieved from the service bus queue itself, so operand one and two. And so I'll have the ability to overwrite these in the adaptive card itself. And then on top of it, I've got two buttons that I talked about before. And so what we're gonna do is in the event that someone wants to resubmit the run, we'll go down the if true path, and then otherwise, we'll go down the false path. So what we're gonna have to do here is we're gonna check to see if the submit action ID, and that's the name of this field, it is part of our dynamic content. We're gonna check to see if the submit action ID, there we can see it there on the, the far end, is equal to resubmit run. And so this was the name of one of my buttons here, resubmit run. And so in that case, if that button is clicked, we're just gonna reconstruct that JSON message. But then what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually go ahead and use the values that were returned back from our adaptive card. So we're gonna go ahead and see uh, that there's a, an attribute called data and then our operand one value itself. Now this is one of the things when you do have a condition, the dynamic content from the adaptive card um, doesn't always show up. So what you may wanna do is just look at your run history and then essentially construct your expression. And uh, you know this gives you an example of, of how you would do it. You would have the body from the post adaptive card action, then there'll be a node called data, then there'll be a node called operand one, and then similarly, we'll have operand two as well. So that'll send uh, a message when we have the happy path. Now, in the event that we just wanna cancel the run, what we'll do is we're just gonna go ahead and terminate this specific logic app. We're gonna say that it's failed. We could choose to say it was canceled, but um, you know, up to you there. We can provide our own code. And then what we'll do is we'll use this result function. And what we'll do is this will be used to capture the error itself. Now this result function needs an input, and the input is the name of the action that you want to get the result of. So in this case, we've got an action called scope-try. So that's what we're gonna put inside of this expression itself. And here's where we'd be able to see the error message that uh, is returned from this specific scope itself. So let's go ahead, let's now run this and uh, see what we find. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm going to place a message on the queue. There we can see our message has been sent successfully. Now, if we head over to our logic app, we'll find a running instance. So let's go ahead, let's open this up. Okay, we can see that we've gone ahead, received the message, initialized our variable, parsed the JSON successfully, but here we've run into an error. So we're trying to divide by zero, that's naturally going to cause us some issues. So our catch scope has been hit, and we've now gone ahead and sent out our adaptive card and are waiting for a response. So let's go ahead and flip over to Teams where we should have an adaptive card waiting for us. Okay, we're now in Microsoft Teams. An adaptive card has been loaded. We can see the values that were previously submitted 
And what we can now do is go ahead and just change them. So we'll just reinforce the 10, and here we'll replace the two with the zero with a two. Now we've got those two options. We can cancel the run or we can resubmit. When we go ahead and resubmit, what this is gonna do is place a message back onto the queue and we're going to reprocess our message. So back in that logic app where we previously had that failure, we've received the response and we did click on the resubmit button. So as a result, we head down the true path and then we go ahead and we send out a message. And in this case, it's gonna have the proper values so we don't have to worry about uh, it failing once again. But uh, if we go back and just refresh our run history, we should see another instance, there it is right there, that was kicked off as a result of us putting that message back on the queue. And in that case, what we have is the correct values here, 10 divided by two, so we don't have any failures from that perspective. So yeah, so that's a, essentially a, a demo of how you can use adaptive cards in very much like a human in the loop type scenario where an operations person could go ahead and review. Now, naturally this is a, a very simple example, but I did want to just show the pattern. And naturally you could find ways to make this more extensible and more sort of uh, like broad appealing, like dealing with more scenarios. Um, but uh, it is a pretty interesting way to inject feedback from an operations team in the middle of an integration and having a rich experience. And, you know, everyone uses Teams these days, so you're not introducing new tools or yet another place for people to look for messages. So that's pretty cool. All right, so thanks for checking out another video on the channel. If you haven't gone ahead and subscribed, please please go ahead and do so. Likes, comments, also welcome. In addition, if you're not following me on Twitter, go ahead and find me at Weirzy, and happy to interact with you over there as well. Thanks again for checking out this video, and we'll see you again soon on the channel. Take care.